This is Steve Juham for MMA Mania. This interview with the Detroit superstar Darren Cruikshank was recorded one week before he fights Shinji Sasaki on April 17th in Nagoya, Japan. Hello? Hi, Darren Cruikshank. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. This is Steve Juham from MMA Mania. You're getting everything together to get on that big flight to Japan tomorrow. Yeah, getting all packed up, ready to go. Awesome. It's going to be your first fight in the land of the rising sun. Exactly. I always ask fighters this when they're going to Japan for a fight. Do you like the cuisine? Do you, are you going to be able to eat well while you're over there? Uh, well, you know, I actually always pack, uh, like a hot plate, a pan, um, you know, everything I need to cook in my own room. Uh, I like to control what I eat because of the weight cut so hard. Um, so I'll probably just hit a grocery store. Hopefully they have some normal stuff that, uh, that I can eat and, uh, do it up. Well, since you mentioned the weight cut, you're fighting at lightweight for this fight, as you have for most of your career, at least all the UFC fights I can think of. So what do you eat to maintain yeah. that lightweight? You, how do you stay? Well, you said it's a hard cut, so how do you keep, what do you eat to stay there? Uh, well, I mean, I probably get, I don't get up too big, uh, compared to some guys, but, um, I normally walk around about 180 and, and, you know, maybe in the last year. And then I diet down to about 171, 172. And then when I get there, I cut the water, I water load, and then, um, you know, cut the rest of the water out and make weight. So, not that big. No, it doesn't sound too bad, but it's been no. in, the, in the news of late again now that California has said they're going to do gravity testing for fighters to make sure they're not dehydrated. And uh, obviously that won't be an issue for Ryzen or your fight there, but what do you think with the future of dehydration testing in the sport? You know, I think it's uh, it's not going to work. I mean, that cutting weight is a part of the sport. That's a part of the fight that's, uh, you know, that's, it, it doesn't make sense to me how they're going to control people's weight classes. Like, how much more do they want to govern us as fighters? Like, we're fighting. I don't get. Uh, I I just don't think it's. I don't think it's going to work. You know, it, it's we're not playing Barbies. We're all cutting weight. We're actually fighting each other in the cage. They need to stop trying to make this. Uh, this. Uh, they need to stop making mixed martial arts into one of the other girly sports around the world. Well, that's straight from the Detroit Superstar. Don't turn fighting into a girly sport. As a guy who comes exactly. from Eastern Michigan, you know about fighting. Yes, exactly. Now, I always wondered why you weren't called the Wayne Superstar, though, because you're actually from Wayne, Michigan. Yeah, well, I, uh, I, yeah, I'm from Wayne. I went to Westland, John Glenn. Uh, I actually lived in Inkster, uh, throughout my whole high school and middle school career. Um, but uh, I was actually having a, uh, a fight in, uh, Detroit. And for King the Cage, and they had this like I didn't have a nickname. They had a uh, uh, like a radio um, commercial, and it was like you know, come see Detroit superstars Darren Kirkshank, and the name stuck ever since. <laughs> well, it seemed to be a good fit at UFC. People caught on to it and had some fun with it when you were in the cage there. But obviously, yeah. that, that time has come and gone. I Unfortunately, you know, it, you got released early in January. But how are you feeling after your UFC run is concluded? You know, I uh, I don't feel too bad about it. Uh, I mean, I had an awesome career. Like, you know, a lot of people strive to make it to that level. Um, but I don't think uh, my career... Uh, is over anywhere. You know, I'm still in, in my prime. Um, as far as the cut, uh, the UFC is basically like, you know, you've lost three in a row. We can't, we can't put you on a card. Um, cause as soon as I'm done fighting, I always ask when can I fight again? Like, we can't put you on a card. We can keep you on the roster. Uh, but we're going to have to basically bench you unless we need you for a, uh, short notice fight. Or, like, way down the road, we can give you another fight. I'm like, well, I need to fight to make money to pay bills. And they're like, well, let's, uh, how about we cut you? You go fight. Uh, potentially, you can make it back if you find somewhere else. Uh, awesome, you know. It, so, it was kind of, um, like, a neutral. It wasn't a bad uh, let go or anything like that. There's no bad beef between me and the UFC. Um, and potentially, I can make it back there. Right, so it's just a mutual understanding on both sides that they didn't see anything for you short term, but you want to keep fighting short term, so everybody's happy now. Yes. That's good. And uh, hey, an impressive performance in Rising and a few more fights for them or somebody else, like you said, you can be right back in the mix because people get injured or kicked out of fights all the time, so there's always going to be slots open. 
Right. Tell me a little bit about your opponent for Rising, this uh, Toreo Supernova, Shinji Sasaki. What do you know about him? Uh, well, I, I've watched whatever he's got on YouTube. You know, there's not too many fights of his. Uh, but, you know, he's got a decent record. I want to say, actually, we had the same record. I've just fought at a lot higher level than him. Um, I think he's pretty flat-footed on his feet. I think uh, he's better on the ground uh, as far as is like, like he's probably more comfortable on the ground than on his feet. Um, I didn't see too much as far as his wrestling, like trying to get it to the ground. Um, I think I'm going to knock his head off into the second row of the uh, venue. Well, that should be uh, how the fight plays out if it goes by just the statistics alone because he's got only three knockouts versus ten submissions, whereas on your record, it's nine KOs and one submission. So you're looking to knock that head out. Exactly. Yes, I'm, I'm going to try to put that in the, in left field. Yeah, and you're right about the records. You're both 16 and 8, but he's got three draws. That's the one difference. I've never understood why Japanese fighters seem to have so many draws on their record. I, I saw one recently where he'd had like, you know, 32, 18, and 10. It's like, how do you have 10 draws? What is it about Japan that brings that out? I have no clue. And you know what? I'm going to experience that now. So uh, maybe we can do another interview and I can give you the old inside put. Indeed, yeah, maybe there's just something the way those fights get structured. But what do you think of Rising as an organization in itself? They kind of made their name on that Breakfast with Fedor card they did back at the end of the year. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I've always been a fan of uh, Pride uh, growing up, watching mixed martial arts, watching the UFC, and then Pride was uh, its own animal. And uh, when Rising came about, I guess it's all the old owners of Pride. That, uh, that came together, came back together and started a new organization. Um, so I'm excited to, uh, fight in a ring, fight, uh, in front of the Japanese crowd, which is a whole different animal than, uh, everybody else. You know, I guess when you watch a fight there, it's like super quiet. They sit there and study and, and watch the action instead of like, uh, boo, boo the guys or cheer for the guys. You know, it's, a, it's, a, I guess it's a little different. Um, but the soccer kicks, the the knees to the face on the ground, that's going to be, uh, that's always something I've always wanted to do um, growing up watching watching fighting and thought it was pretty exciting. So I can't wait to, uh, to try that out. Well, you're right. It is a lot of the old pride people, not just behind the scenes, the guys like Saki Kabara, but the guys in front of the scenes fighting, like Fedor, who I already mentioned, and Kaz Vegeta, who's in the main event of this card. So you, you got to be pretty stoked that old Ironhead is going to be out there in the main event after your fight. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's an honor. And that guy is, I mean, he earned the nickname the hard way. It's like, okay, nobody seems to be able to knock this guy out. He can take a million punches and keep on coming. That was his legacy and pride. I would not want that legacy. <laughs> I prefer to, uh, to stick and move and hit without getting hit, so... <laughs> That's, I, I tend to worry about guys who, who say they don't mind getting hit. You know, it's like, okay, what about 20, 30 years from now? Maybe you'll mind it a right, little bit. Right, exactly. When you're trying to put a conversation together and you can't, can't say what you're trying to get out. Speaking of your record of knockouts and wanting to be the guy that delivers the hit opposed to getting hit, what would you say is your favorite knockout of all the fights you've had so far? I, I could pick one, but I want to hear what you say. Uh, favorite knockout, probably my, I mean, my, my real official UFC debut against uh, Henry Martinez. Um, I mean, you can, I guess you count the, uh, the, my UFC debut is the ultimate fighter finale, but it was still the ultimate fighter finale, not a UFC card. But, um, my fight after that with uh, Henry Martinez, when it was a one kick, head kick KO and dropped, he dropped, I put my hands up and it was over, didn't have to follow up or anything. That was a pretty spectacular one, I have to agree, but my personal favorite was uh actually a fight that I ended up ranking you in the top 15 for. When you caught Eric Koch with that head kick, I was like, boom, top 15 guy right there. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Uh, that that was an exciting one, too. You know, I was uh I was almost like uh kind of mad that I kept getting leg kicks from him, and I was like, dude, I'm, I'm just going to throw a hard combination, and it caught, and he went down, and I followed up. It was perfect. It was. It was a beautiful finish to the fight. I honestly thought you were heading right up to the top of the division off that fight. And I don't want to dwell on the past, but at the same time, I was like, I was surprised when things started to go south after that. I was like, man, I had top of the division written out for this guy and, and it just didn't pan out. 
Yeah, I had some tough fights after that that would have skyrocketed me, you know, to the to the top ten of the of the bracket. But you know, every fight is, it's a fight, and either guy can win. Those guys were better than me that day. I feel like if I would have had all those a second time, it can go either way. You know, I was as far as my uh, career at that time, I was right at the cusp, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate that I lost those fights. But that's the sport, that's the game, and, and uh, you know, you got to try to come back. It's not uh, out of the ballpark that I can't be, uh, you know, world champion someday because, uh, you know, I'm growing and and, uh, and learning just like everybody else. Yeah, and you're, so. still, you're still young in this sport. You're only 30, and a lot of guys fight into their 40s, so you got plenty of time. Exactly. How about that one fight with KJ Noons? We didn't get to see it finish because of the eye poke, but what do you think would have happened if that went the whole distance or uh, less than the distance? You know, I was, uh, I feel like I was starting to get my range. I mean, you see some photos in there. I was cracking them with some cool stuff. I mean, uh, but the eye poke, unfortunately, uh, you know, I had to have surgery the next day and, and that's pretty scary as far as when anything comes to your eyes because you only get two of them. And, uh, uh, so it, uh, I would, I asked him constantly for the rematch because uh, mentally I wasn't finished, you know, like there was no outcome from the fight. And, uh, you know, I wanted that rematch and AJ Newman was like, look, I don't want to fight a nobody. He's like, you know, you're not a name. I want to fight a name. I'm like, who, who are you, dude? So like, <laughs> I, you know, I have like, 20 more followers, 20,000 more followers than you on like Facebook and social media. So I'm like, fuck you, man. Let's fuck. But <laughs> whatever. Pretty sure they cut him too. And, and what does he have to brag about other than one fight with a Diaz brother? I mean, what, what's right. his, what's a his million legacy? years ago? Right. Yeah. Way back in, what was it? Strike Force or Elite XC? One of the two? Right. Exactly. So. Fuck that guy. Yeah, he he shouldn't be talking about who's a nobody when he's talking to the Detroit superstar. That that just doesn't fly. Yeah, right. And have there been any lingering effects? Because you say you had surgery right after that fight, and, and you're still fighting, so I'd have to assume no. I uh, as far I mean, I actually get a, I guess it's not. Uh, I get an infection every uh, couple months, and i it might be from that. Um, so I mean, it sucks, but. You know, it's better than having, like, I guess, my knee blown out or something like that. Yeah, or double vision or a detached retina. Like right, no, no, I, yeah, I just, uh, sometimes I get, I, I'm prone to more infections than, uh, than normal. But, I mean, with medicine and, you know, modern technology, that's stuff that can be controlled and you can keep on fighting. Right, right. As far as my vision is, my vision's fine. That's good. It's coming up on April 17th, Nagoya, Japan. It's going to be a fantastic card. And one of the top fights on the card, Sunji Sasaki and the Detroit superstar, Darren Crookshank. So anything else you want to say about this fight before I let you go? Because I know you got some more packing to do to get ready to go to Japan. Yeah, I don't know where it's going to be streamed, but uh, if you can watch it, try to. You know, it's going to be exciting. You're going to see a whole different Darren Crookshank because the rules are different. Um, and I'm going to try to come out, uh, vicious and, uh, you know, like a killer. So come watch it. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure that, uh, rising PR on Twitter will let us know how it's going to be streamed or available. Maybe we'll get the breakfast with fade ordeal again. It'll air on tape delay on spike. I think that'd be a great way for everybody to see your fight. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, and since we've already mentioned that you have way more social media followers than KJ Nunes, let's throw out those social media plugs. Well, you can follow me at uh, uh, Crookshank155 on uh, Twitter. Uh, Darren Crookshank is on Instagram, and uh, my Facebook fan page is Darren Crookshank, so just check it out. Uh, you can also check out my website, uh, DarrenCrookshank.com, awesome. or my gym's website at MichiganPT.com. Oh, that reminds me. That was one last question I wanted to ask you. The, the name Michigan Top Team, is that like a, an affiliation with American Top Team, or is it just your own thing? Yeah, we do, we have no affiliation with uh, American Top Team. Um, we just kind of came together and threw something up, and that, that kind of stuck. So we are the best uh, team in Michigan, so I think it's uh, uh, I think we could change the name to Michigan's Top Team. <laughs> <laughs> Either way works. I, I, I'd say go there and train with a Detroit superstar and be one of Michigan's best and be one of the world's best. Exactly. Come on up. 
All right. Thank you again for the time, Darren. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a successful flight and a successful fight. Awesome. Thank you.